Uh, I want to uh, go through uh, the presentation this evening um, and uh, recognize that we uh, have a lot of material to cover. It has been, uh, as the uh, counselor said, a, uh, a process that began in January and all of uh, January 2015. Uh, so tonight I'm going to go through the charge that was given back at that time, as well as provide a general orientation to the parcel. As the counselor alluded, we did that in June, but for the members of the public present, I would, like, I would suggest we do that again. I also review that vision that was adopted at your June meeting, again, halfway through the committee's work. Uh, then, because it was so extensive and robust, I want to review the process that the committee followed, as well as review all of the uh, high quality public input that we received. Uh, highlight some of the key considerations that were constant themes as the committee went about its work, as well as make clear uh, what's uh, proposed uh, to take place uh, at the Sagamore Creek land, uh, and what's going on there now, and make a comparison. I think it's, a, it's an illuminating comparison. And then review the details of the uh, recommended master plan. Uh, first, very briefly, uh, the charge was to create a plan for public usage of the city-owned Sagamore Creek land. It is a 66-acre parcel of land located along the Sagamore Creek, uh, city owned by the city. We have representation uh, as the council reviewed by the city councilors, two of them. Uh, we also have two residents. I also want to point out we have uh, representatives from the school board, the recreation board, and the conservation commissioner. Not conservation commissioner. I've had the opportunity to serve in an extra official capacity as the city manager's designee. I think one of the uh, questions that gets asked is why do this? Why create a plan? Uh, why go through this effort? And I think there's some very simple images that can exemplify how the committee arrived at answering that, that very question. And for example, this is your uh, view uh, as you drive down uh, Jones Avenue uh, towards the Sagamore Creek uh, property that is owned in common ownership of the city of Portsmouth and its residents. Uh, you proceed down the street, and you can't quite tell, but right here is the uh, entry point, if you will, and access point for the uh, parcel. This is what you would see. Uh, no, no clear delineation that it's publicly owned, no invitation that it can be accessed for recreation purposes. Uh, it's, it's, it's just there with no signage or identifier. If you happen to know that the parcel was there, and that the recreation asset was there, you would then be confronted with this site, which is the locked gate that is at the beginning of the parcel. This is, this is uh, how you would uh, approach the parcel. And then to get around that fence, you go around this path, which is not very clear, not very welcoming throughout those trees. That's one side of the fence. The other side of the fence is uh, through, this, through this mud into the sensitive vernal pool habitat that uh, fronts that area of the parcel. If you did get through all of that, you would get to this uh, open space, which is uh, blocked by a fence. I apologize if you can't see it well, but a chain link fence surrounds approximately 10 acres of this parcel. It is the former cap that was uh, for the Jones landfill that was closed and capped in the late 1980s. Uh, that is one of the <coughs> largest unprogrammed open spaces available to the residents of Portsmouth in the entire city. 10 acres of open space, no trees, and it fronts on the Sagamore Creek. It's very beautiful. And that is the work that the committee has seen itself doing in trying to create a public plan for this parcel. The vision, uh, which was adopted by the council, uh, was used and instrumental in guiding the committee's work from that June date to tonight. And the vision was to, for the Sagamore Creek land is a unique and valuable community resource that should be conserved and made accessible to all in a balanced manner that promotes waterfront access, protection of invaluable natural features, and permits recreation opportunities that complement one another and which are sensitive to the overall vision of preserving the site's character. Very briefly, the orientation to the site. This is the 66 acre parcel right here, known as the Sagamore Creek land. You can see it lies along Sagamore Creek. 
It's also adjacent to this large parcel, which is the Portsmouth High School complex. Uh, Route 1 runs alongside here. There's a housing development here known as Winchester Place, a housing development on the other side known as Hyde Watch. And the access way through vehicle access is via Jones Avenue, which connects to Sagamore Avenue. And uh, that is the way it's commonly accessed by vehicle. Just a more of a, a detailed shot of just the 56 <laughs> acres, you can see more clearly that 10 acre capped landfill that I spoke of earlier right in the middle of the site. Uh, you can also see what is an existing and well used network of trails, both by members of our community but also heavily used by our cross <coughs> team. Uh, this open space is uh, bordered by a mature wooded forest, generally over here, as well as a, a forest and uh, wetland area, complete with vernal pools, and of course the uh, salt marsh um, on the uh, southern portion of the border. <coughs> the committee's process, uh, all in 2015, as we've said, uh, began in Jan January, where the committee delved in uh, quite deeply into the past usage of the site and learning about the natural resource values. I don't speak a lot about those natural resource values in this presentation this evening because of the, the time. Uh, however, we shouldn't take for granted that it has uh, a wonderful fringing uh, salt marsh, it has a mature uh, wood, it has vernal pool habitat, <coughs> and uh, an open understory in its forest, uh, not to mention its frontage on Sagmore Creek and that open space. Uh, these are well inventoried and well cared for, I would add, natural resources that are managed uh, in part by the Conservation Commission. Uh, the Conservation Commission provided uh, a lot of the information that the committee relied on uh, through its work over the years, uh, through things like the Public Undeveloped Lands Assessment and uh, Wetlands Inventory, as well as the Royal Pools Analysis. But we also look closely uh, at the site's past use as a landfill and what that means for us today in Portsmouth in 2015, as well as what other reuses uh, have been done in New Hampshire of uh, similar land use, landfill uh, sites. Um, throughout, of course, we refer to the many studies, uh, including the master plan and other documents that have guided uh, past committees on the overall uh, public's interest in open spaces and access to the waterfront. Uh, we also had a very successful uh, meeting with the school board, recreation board, sustainability committee, and conservation commission representatives where everyone who has interaction with that parcel had an opportunity to talk about their current uses as well as their aspirations for the parcel in the future. That led to a very well attended uh, public input session where that draft vision, now adopted, and the guidelines were reviewed in depth with members of the public, over, 30, over 20 members of the public speaking at that time. Um, that led to the June adoption, and from there on, August to November, the, council, the committee held uh, additional meetings, uh, <coughs> formulate its uh, plan in front of you this evening, and also held a uh, well-attended uh, public input session in November on this draft report that's before you tonight and is recommended by the committee. Just to highlight the other opportunities for public input and participation, we heavily rely on this communication tool. The city's website, this particular website established for the committee, where we posted the reports that were reviewed by the committee, the upcoming meetings, links to the meeting minutes, uh, as well as past reports that were reviewed. There's also an opportunity here, a public web comment form, which I say later on here, we have received over 33 very thoughtful, detailed comments from members of the public via that particular tool, in addition to the public input meeting in May um, and the public meeting in November, 